Hello. What you're looking at here is a heavily corroded gear case off of a 1995 30 horsepower Evinrude outboard. And uh, the plan is to rub the parts out of it. Uh, I bought this as a spare lower unit in case I needed the gears and clutch dog and whatnot for my um, military motor I've been working on. So I don't, I'm kind of tired of looking at this thing to be honest. So the plan is to rip all the salvageable parts out of it and get rid of the housing. So in this video we're basically just going to be tearing it down. Uh, it should be pretty simple, but you never know, especially uh, given the condition it's in. Uh, it is, however, leaking oil profusely out of the rear bearing carrier there. The whole thing is just, just leaking. So I think that constant oil flow is probably going to help us you know, prevent that bearing carrier from seizing into the housing there. I think it will come right apart, even considering you know, it's basically a pile of salt water here. So it didn't come with a drive shaft or anything. Not that I need it anyway. Alright, looks pretty pretty straightforward. Alright, so the bottom of the bearing carrier here. Well, the bottom sides more like. There are two 5 16 screws. I need to pop those out. We are going to need a puller, which is pretty standard, and we're going to need some shorter puller bolts. You buy these separately, they don't really come with a puller anymore. I believe they used to, but they're quarter 20, I think they're 8 inch. They'll actually measure them. Tighten these bad boys in there. Usually I just use the impact wrench here, but I guess I'm feeling strong. Just use the traditional handle and wrench. Alright, screw this, I'm getting the impact. You can see why the impact has a more favorable outcome. It does just make life easy. Yeah. Now, if that's not proper use of an impact, I don't know what is. So, right here, below all this oxidation, is a screw. And I probably should have taken that out first. But I didn't. Screw's got to come out. It holds in our shifter. Which, if you're unfamiliar, you will see it in a second. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to try the impact again. Can't go wrong there, I guess. Alright, a couple good taps. Broke down the corrosion. So, I think uh, this will work. Look at that. Alright, this shift rod has the top connector still in it. Gotta take that off. And the fun part, which I probably should have done this first too. This connector's gotta come off. And uh doesn't really look like that's the kind of thing that's gonna wanna move. So this is a little hard to align. Got it. All right, first part to come is the uh, retaining ring. It's not called a retaining ring, but it sounds like it is, so I'm going with it. 
uh, our cradle shifter is in the way. Let's go ahead and... So I'm thinking I should have pulled the entire lower shifter on out first. Well, the, uh, the brass keeper and stuff were on. Now I've got to find a way to grab this. Let me take it out of there. All right, lower shift rod is out. And now we should be able to wiggle our shifter out of there. Yeah, no problem there. Probably rotate this whole thing upside down, get it out that way. Yeah, well, it's kind of coming though. So it's got to clear the top. All right, we did that. Should come out now. needle nose would really come in handy. I should probably get some. Okay, I have an earth nav magnet on the end of my screwdriver. Son of a... Son of a... Alright, here's the rear thrust washer. All right, reverse gear is out and it is looking good. Looks like the rest of our shifter is still hanging up in there. Let's get that out if we can. Might need to pull it out with the clutch dog. See, I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to lose the detent balls. Alright, I just recovered one. Let's hope the other two, well the other two, the spring and the other ball are still together. Alright, I got one ball in the spring. Alright, so I gotta find the other detent ball. It's around somewhere. Where are you, ball? Ah, found it. It was hanging out where the uh, shift rod goes. Good. Now the rest of the parts should come right out. There's our clutch dog and our shifter and cradle. Now our pinion and forward gear usually will hang up together. Here, come on out of there. My magnetic tool here, the pinion, shouldn't give us any problems. There is the pinion. Now we need to get the little thrust bearing. Alright, so there is the thrust bearing and thrust washer. Let's put them back on the pinion, back in the same way they come out.
And we still have a bearing down there. A little tapered roller bearing. Good stuff. And I doubt there's anything else in there, but you never know what you're going to find. Nothing down in the pinion hole. I could pull the race out, bearing race out of the front there, but I'm not going to. No real point to it. The only thing left now really is to get my magnet back. And that's it, really. And here are our gears, ugly and smelly, but the gear faces themselves look quite nice. So if there's a problem with my little military motor, I think these will solve it. But what is this? Little little metal shaving. That's a little concerning. But Two little metal shavings. Hmm. So they are not magnetic. If so they are, they aren't coming off my magnet. So maybe it's leftover aluminum or aluminum shavings. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll clean them up. Make sure there's no metal shavings in there. They'll get reused. There's no real... You know, it could just be dirt and corrosion that I scraped in there removing it. It's probably what it is. Because the rest of the gears look fine. No real rounding of the gear, to, the clutch dog here either. Yeah, I'd say these are some good looking gears. Anyway, I'll clean them up with my uh, little parts tank cleaning solution there. Polish them up all pretty like. And then uh, save them in case I need them. Little uh, 20 to 30 horsepower engines don't always come along that often. At least in my part of the woods, it's a very, very desirable motor that everybody wants. So usually when you find one, it's well, it's corroded as this thing. So the guy I bought this from, he I don't know what, I don't know if he uh, had one that was junk or had this lower unit and bought another one that didn't look like this. I don't know. But either way, the gears inside are worth the purchase, I think. So all in all, not bad. All right, before scrapping this thing out, might as well remove the stud. To do that, you just need to get two uh, fine thread nuts that'll fit on there. I would tell you the size, but I do not remember. Oh yeah. Not a quarter. Five sixteenths maybe? Yeah, probably five sixteenths. The fine thread there. Probably twenty-four threads per inch or so. Yeah, that thing is in there, all right. <sighs> well, the stud ain't moving. But hey, at least we tried, right? Oh, as mentioned earlier with the pivot pin. Pivot pin goes through the little cradle shifter, just like so. And then allows it to pivot as you shift gears. Oh. So a lot of people. Oh. Yeah. This and then, then, then. A lot of people when they're changing their oil, they'll pull this out on accident or not knowing, and then you know they send me a message. Oh, I pulled this out. What do I do? If it goes back in, you're fine. If it doesn't, get a little awl or a nail or something and push this around until you can see through it, and then put the pin back in, and you'll be fine. All right, everybody. I'll save those parts in case I need them. Which I probably will at some point. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed how to take apart your lower unit, and I'll see y'all next time.